In the headlines, Niger Junta ends mandate of ambassadors to U.S., France, Nigeria and Togo as peace talks fail. NLC threatens another strike over federal government's contempt charges. Diphtheria claims lives of 122 children in seven months. And away from Nigeria, Ethiopia declares state of emergency following clashes in Amhara. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashin Husayna Usman. Now the news in detail. The military junta in Niger Republic has cut off ties with Nigeria after efforts of Economic Community of West African States to resolve the ongoing impasse failed. ECOWAS had issued a seven-day ultimatum for the reinstatement of President Mohamed Bazoum to avoid possible clash with the junta. President Bola Tinubu had sent a high-powered delegation led by former head of state General Abdesalam Abubakar to the country to meet with the coup leaders on Thursday. The delegation only met with representatives of the junta. Subsequently, Niger severed ties with Nigeria, Togo, France, its colonizer and also the United States. Media reports quote one of the coup leaders as saying the functions of the extraordinary and plenipotentiary ambassadors of the Republic of Niger to France, Nigeria, Togo and the United States are terminated. Similarly, Ariwa Consultative Forum, a pan-northern social political group, has advised the ECOWAS against use of force to oust the military junta in the Republic of Niger. This is contained in a statement by the ACF Secretary General, Murtala Aliyu, in Kaduna. While condemning the coup and calling for the restoration of democratic governance in Niger, the forum said it supports the position of, uh, to restore democratic rule in Niger. The statement, however, said the ECOWAS should tour the path of dialogue and diplomacy and not use force in resolving the current impasse in Niger in the interest of peaceful coexistence with the brotherly neighbor and stability of the ECOWAS region. ACF said Nigeria and Niger share a long historical border of more than 1,500 kilometers with families, communities sharing common facilities, including farmlands, markets, cultural bonds, and languages for many centuries predating the trans-Saharan trade and colonial times. The forum noted that the measures being contemplated by the ECOWAS should take into consideration the historical antecedents and mutual interests of the two countries and weighed the consequences of the use of force. All right, now we have Daily Trust uh, foreign, report, foreign Desk reporter Joshua Odeyemi joining us now via phone. Hello, Joshua. Thank you so much for joining us on Trust News Update. Yeah, hello, good afternoon. I'm happy to be here. All right, so uh, Joshua, tell us. Now, the ruling military junta in Niger has announced, uh, you know, uh, to end its mandate of plenipotentiary ambassador to Niger, U.S., France, and also Togo. Now, what does this mean for uh, the country and or these countries? And is there any reciprocal uh, gesture from Nigeria? Yeah, the the junta this morning announced that uh, they are severing their relationship with these countries, especially Nigeria. I know the uh, the president of Nigeria has been uh, has been leading the ECOWAS team. Uh, you know that uh, they have discharged some sanctions to uh, Nigeria Republic, and of course, uh, contemplating military uh, action in, in case uh, the junta they refuse to. To, to restate uh, the democratically elected president. And uh, they've seen Nigeria as one of the enemies who, uh, who they need to, to face headlong. And uh, I think this is the first step to show Nigeria that they are actually not backing out. You know, uh, uh, about two days ago, Nigeria actually, yesterday, Nigeria cut power. You know, Nigeria supply more than 70% of, of the electricity needs in the uh, Nigeria Republic. So they called the power yesterday, and um, it shows that the sanctions threatened by ECOWAS are actually playing out already. 
So this is their own first move to, to show that they are, they are really serious with taking over power in the Republic. Okay, now the announcement to actually sever ties, uh, you know, came after a delegation was actually sent to Niger, you know, by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Now, do you have an idea of the outcome of the meeting between uh, the uh, Nigerian delegation and also Niger's military leaders? Actually, the, the junta leader didn't meet with the delegation. He actually delegated some, some of his men to meet with them yesterday and uh, as of now we've not uh, learned of anything uh, any of the discussion uh with with the with the team in jail there so uh maybe before the end of the day we'll get to know what uh the, dis what the discussion was and uh, of course i'm not sure they actually uh had any any agreement in place because the action of the junta this morning shows that uh, there is no agreement in place okay all right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Joshua, for joining us uh, on the the on on the news this morning, or this afternoon. Thank yeah. you, pardon. You're All welcome. right. So thank that was Joshua Odeemi. Uh, he is a Daily Trust reporter on Foreign Desk. Now let's move on to more stories here. Nigerian ousted leader Mohamed Bazoum has urged the U.S. and the entire international community to help restore constitutional order after last week's coup. President Mohamed Bazoum made the call in an opinion piece published by the Washington Post. He said he was writing as a hostage. Bazoum also warned that the region could fall under uh, or further under Russian influence via Wagner Group, which already operates in neighboring countries. BBC also reports that Niger's ambassador to the U.S., uh, Kiari Liman Tingwiri, told AFP news agency that the junta should come to reason and realize that the affair cannot succeed. Bazoum warned the entire Central Sahel region could fall to Russian influence via the Wagner Group, whose brutal terrorism has been on full display in Ukraine. Niger is a significant uranium producer, a fuel that is vital for nuclear power, and under Bazoum, the country was a key Western ally in the fight against insurgents in West Africa's Sahel region. Many supporters of the coup in Niger have been chanting pro-Russian slogans and wearing the colors of the Russian flag. The chairman of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has dispatched a delegation to Niger Republic with a mandate to expeditiously resolve the current political impasse in the country. The president has also sent a separate delegation led by Ambassador Baba Ghana Kengibe to engage with the leaders of Libya and Algeria on the Niger crisis. Now, the dispatch of the two delegations is in line with the resolution reached at the end of the extraordinary summit of the ECOWAS held last weekend in Abuja. The Nigeria Labour Congress Thursday said it will commence a nationwide strike on August 14, 2023, should the Federal Ministry of Justice fail to withdraw the lawsuit filed against the organized labor. The NLC made the decision during the National Executive Council meeting, which was held in Abuja. According to a statement signed by the national president, Joe Ajero, the Ministry of Justice and Industrial or National Industrial Court have continued to allow themselves to be used as agents of anti-democracy. The center noted that though it agreed to suspend protests based on its meeting with the president, it will embark on a nationwide strike starting from August 14, 2023, should the government fail to withdraw the lawsuit filed against it. Highlighting the decisions of the NEC, Ajero said the NEC resolved to support and affirm the decision to suspend further protests on the nationwide mass protests to commit to maintaining the required vigilance needed to hold government accountable on its assurances and governance in general to commit to the terminal date of August 19, 2023, within which the issues around the petroleum price hike will be agreed given the assurances of the President and the National Assembly. 
Moving on to politics, President Bola Ampetinubu has urged the leadership of the All Progressives Congress, particularly elected officials, to be steadfastly committed to good governance, which will re-engineer the, econom the economic and political landscape of the nation to address the needs of the poor. He spoke on Thursday in Abuja at the National Executive Committee of the ruling party, which elected former Kano State Governor Abdullah Higandude as national chairman and former Senate spokesman Bashiru uh, Ajibola as national secretary. Kendi Amodu reports. Adversity, if you look at it carefully, but let's redirect this party. Let's show the rest of the country that we are a party united for a purpose. But aware of the force of opinion in the polity, the president is deliberate about defending the legitimacy of the 2023 elections and through a dig at naysayers. This is one of most free and fair elections in the history of Nigeria. Congratulations. And as a Democrat, those who cannot accept the result of a free and fair election does not deserve, they do not deserve the joy of victory. Former APC acting national chairman, Senator Abubakar Kiari, said the ruling party was conscious of new challenges facing it as the majority party at the sub-national level and in the National Assembly. The main agenda of the next meeting was to fill vacant offices of National Chairman and Secretary and appoint new external auditors to audit part party accounts. These offices play a pivotal role in the direction for the party. It is pertinent to note that as enshrined in the constitution of our party, under Article 13, so 13.3, Roman numeral 2, the NEP has the powers to quote, discharge all functions of the national convention in between national conventions. The president, however, urged the neck of the party to take a step further by devolving some of its powers to the National Working Committee to fill other vacancies in the party. From the Transcop Hilton Abuja, Kende Amudu, Trust TV News. Some newsmen billed to cover the APC National Executive Committee meeting were turned back by overzealous security operatives at the Congress Hall of Transcorp Hilton Hotel Abuja venue of the meeting. The security operatives also prevented media and personal aides of governors to attend the meeting. Trustee Vis Shafi Usuleiman reports that limited number of journalists with accreditation were, however, allowed by handlers of the high-profile party gathering with President Bola Tinubu in attendance. <laughs> This is the arrival of Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu, who also doubles as leader of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC. Though it is not unusual to see such tight security arrangement in an event a certain president is attending. Aides to political office holders whispered to this reporter that the tight security regime this time around is unprecedented. <laughs> The APC High Profile Party meeting, which has governors, leadership of the National Assembly, top organ of the party in attendance, is expected to review major happenings such as resignations of its national chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, and National Secretary Eolai Mishari, as well as National Vice Chairman Northwest Salehu Lukman, and agree on emergence of new party leaders. Other appointments are expected to be ratified at the meeting. Shapiro Suleiman. Trust TV News, Abuja. As on first, state government has approved the immediate distribution of food stuff across the 14 local government areas as palliatives due to the removal of fuel subsidy by the federal government. 
The statement by the spokesperson to the governor, Suleiman Idris, said that the decision to distribute food stuff is in line with the current economic realities in the country and the commitment of the Zamfara state government to mitigate the effects of the hike in petrol pump price on citizens. It said that the state government is rolling out plans to make sure that palliatives reach the masses without hitches. The statement also disclosed that phase one of the food distribution will commence with rice, maize, among others. Modalities and high-powered committee have been set up for the purpose after the approval of the governor. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. We take a look at combating menace of cultism in Oshun. Do you stay? Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. If you're just joining us, you're watching Trust News Update, a recap of our top stories. We told you that Niger Junta ends mandates of ambassadors to US, France, Nigeria and Togo as peace talk fails. NLC threatens another strike over federal government's contempt charges. Now moving to health, UNICEF's communications officer in Nigeria, Sefia Kao, has stated that diphtheria has claimed the lives of 122 children in Nigeria as of July 2023. She added that UNICEF is amplifying its efforts to counter the growing outbreak of diphtheria that has affected children in 27 states of Nigeria. Diphtheria is a serious infection caused by strains of bacteria called Cornibacterium diphtheriae that makes a toxin. It can lead to difficulty in breathing, heart rhythm problems and death. It usually affects the mucous membranes of the nose and throats. Diphtheria is extremely rare. A cow said that 3,850 suspected cases of diphtheria were reported as of July and that 1,387 of the cases were confirmed. She listed states affected as Kano, Yobe, Katana, Lagos, Sokoto, Zamfara, and the FCT, which accounted for 98% of the suspected cases. She noted that 71.5% of confirmed cases were found in children between the ages of 2 years and 14 years. On security, the Austrian State Police Command has arrested suspected members of secret societies in the state. The Commissioner of Police in the state, Kende Longe, who's, who disclosed this to newsmen, vowed to read the state of criminal elements. Hamid Oyegbade files the report. I was in a group since 2022. Men of Oshun State Police Command Anti Courtism Squad arrested the suspects at different locations in the state. They were arrested for their membership of secret and unlawful societies and for terrorizing innocent people in the state. The suspects who were arrested in possession of firearms confessed to the crime. I belong to Supreme Area Confraternity and is our former number one that gave the gun to me based on when we want to hand over his regime. And I was in a year group since 2022. I never steal bike before. It was this guy who went to steal the bike and bought it to me at home. 
So we went to where he wanted to sell it together. Uh, I just uh, see lights no more than let me say seven months because I'm a footballer and I'm a student also. And uh, the gun belongs to a, a man called uh, Gorilla. He's not you know, shooting from Lagos, the brothers from Lagos then. The police spokesperson advised youth in the state to shun cultism and other criminal tendencies. We are determined as a command, as a police command, that we are going to read this command of all these criminal elements. The state commissioner of police assured that the suspects will be charged to court. Amit Ojegbade, Trust TV News, Oshobo. With that, we'll take a short break. We'll be back after this. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Now away from Nigeria, Ethiopia's federal government on Friday declared a state of emergency following days of clashes in the Amhara region between the military and local armed fighters. It did not say whether the restriction applied only in Amhara or across the country. Fighting that broke out across the Ethiopia's second most populous region earlier this week between the Fano militia and the Ethiopian National Defense Force has quickly become a security crisis. Fano, a part-time militia with no formal command structure, backed federal troops in a two-year civil war in the neighboring Tigray region that ended with a truce last November. But the relationship has soured over what some in the region say is a disregard by the national government for Amhara's security. The state of emergency allows, among other things, for roadblocks to be established, transport services to be disrupted, curfews to be imposed, and for the military to take over in certain areas. In sports, the D Tigers have reached the final of the FIBA 2023 Women's Afro Basket Championship. The overpowered host Rwanda, 79-48 in the semi-final tie to seal a fourth straight final appearance of the competition. Reina Wakama's girls were dominant in the first quarter of the game, beating the host 22-6. Nigeria went into the half-time break leading with 26 points. But in the third quarter, Rwanda reduced the lead by 16 points, ending 58-35 in Nigeria's favor. 
Nigeria then continued their dominance in the last quarter to win the tie. The, T the D Tigress are to play Senegal, who defeated Mali in the other semi final. The 2023 Women's Afro Basket Final is billed for Saturday. If they win the final, they will be Nigeria's fourth continental title in a row and sixth overall. Thursday's win means the D-Tigress have qualified for the pre-Olympic qualifying tournament for Paris 2024. Uh, finally, Phoenix Mercury guard Diana Taurasi made WNBA history when she became the first player to score 10,000 career points. Taurasi, 41, reached the milestone with a three-point shot in the third quarter during Mercury's 91-71 home win against Atlanta uh, Dream. She finished with 42 points to also become the oldest player in WNBA history to produce a 40-point game. Taurasi, a three-time WNBA champion and two-time WNBA Finals most valuable player, ended the night with a total of 10,024 career points. Taurasi started the game knowing 18 points would take her to the 10,000 mark and scored 10 by halftime before quickly adding a two-point layup and a three-pointer to her tally. On the Mercury's next possession, Taurasi took a pass from Moria Jefferson and successfully completed the shot to the delight of the crowd. And with that, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Darshan Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.